Welcome to Pug TV. I'm Jadrian, and we're going to be doing some Star Trek Online. It's Tuesday. Tuesday. Well, we had Wednesday Warp Core when we make our changes, but I never really did think of something catchy for Star Trek on Tuesday. Tues, Tuesday Torpedo Tube Day. Anyway, my wife's going over her crew skills. So, the... Uh, special foundry mission for today is called the Grazerok City Grazerok but I looked and it specifically said faction was federation so we should be all set this week to run the selected foundry mission without any problems so in the pug pen we've got Eagle Claw and we got Obram that I can see if anybody else is out there Cynic01 just popped in my viewer list every once in a while doesn't always show everybody so for everybody else out there hello as well so my wife's here uh, Raz is down on looks like she's on earth running through picking up her her crew missions to get more people for running her officers I'm gonna just take a moment to check my officers and just maybe check on them <gasps> a failure I hate that Okay, doesn't look like anybody died. Luckily. And then I really don't read the... Just... Yay, you did it. Let's see, let's see who I can send out on something. I sent a few folks out. <laughs> She's trying to navigate and we, we're just finishing up some leftover birthday cheesecake and so it's hard to navigate and steer when you're having cheesecake so hopefully she'll finish her cheesecake soon so she'll be safe to go adventuring with us so. yeah she says you have to savor the cheesecake can't can't rush cheesecake ah that's true have to savor I rush it it don't matter to me it all goes in the same place uh, let's check. Do I got any available personal ones that look safe to do? Oh, I don't want to send too many reds out to a, a rare. Oh, okay, that's good enough for now. All right, so Euclid says you can't rush a good cheesecake. Yep, everybody agrees. Even Obsidian Moon says no, no, you can't. Well, you can. <laughs> you can rush it and then you regret it because you're like, oh my gosh, where'd all the cheesecake go? So. Yeah, don't don't rush it. You can just yeah, not recommended. Okay, so Grazrock City. I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to safely invite everybody. Uh, that way, hopefully, we get the the crew going here. Oh wait, 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 wait! I gotta remember all the names. There it is. That one. And let's see here. Who else? I can't remember everybody's names. Okay, I got Raz. I, I bet you could do multiple invites on one line. I just haven't tried that. Invite. Uh, let's see. I need like a where's that my friends list because I cannot remember everybody's in name game or in in game names uh, let's see here we go there it is I might be able just to right click bam Look at that, I figured it out just as Nala sent me the thing saying hit your O to find everybody. So I think I've got it. Alright, so who else is out there who wants to come and adventure with us? Obsidian Moon, did you want to join us? I think one, two, three, four. I don't know. I forget what our limit was. I don't remember if we can have five people or not. Five. Okay. Looks like Obsidian Moon, you had to... Well, 
Well, Obsidian Moon, my wife says that if you wanted to play with us, she would she would drop out if you wanted to join. <laughs> she said she would. <laughs> she said she would gladly drop out so she could eat her cheesecake and watch us play. So if you want to come and adventure with us, uh, yeah, we got room. Just let me know. Ruthven, uh, you can hang out. You can stay if you want. My wife said she would eat the cheesecake and work on her dailies and whatnot. So I think we already got a volunteer. Yeah, she's got her cheesecake and then she'll work on her her crew members and whatnot. So Obsidian, yeah, if you uh, want to join us, just give us a give me your in-game name and I'll see if I can get you invited. <laughs> My wife's talking about how good her cheesecake is. Mm. It was good too. It was really good. Okay. Okay, one second obsidian moon. All right. Oh, despair. I remember that name. I didn't remember the link connection between Obsidian Moon and Despair, but I do remember the name Despair. So, welcome back. Welcome aboard, as it were. Awesome. All right. So I'm gonna pick up the mission. I haven't picked it up yet. I I just wrote it down. So let's take a look here. Oh, I gotta go to community authored. And let me do the search. She's mm, mm and Owen over her uh, cheesecake. I'll have what she's having. And there it is, Grazerak City. Awesome. All right, so let's read a little bit about this thing. Uh, it says here, first place winner, Foundry Challenge number two. It's also the selected STO Spotlight number nine. Warning, lots of reading, story-driven mission. Oh, yeah, yeah, and I guess we're done. No, we'll give it a shot here. It says solo play, no combat needed, light puzzle solving, mazes. Oh, goodness, I should have read this beforehand. That's tough, but I said, you know what? It's a foundry spotlight. We will do it. So even though it's a solo play, we are bringing our posse up in this thing. You are asked to retrieve stolen technology from Grazerock City, the greatest luxury resort in its quadrant. Playground for the wealthiest and most successful people in the galaxy. But what evils hide just below the surface? Hmm. <laughs> She's trying to be loud about how good her cheesecake is. <laughs> Ah, uh, nice. Okay, so let's make sure. Uh, Obsidian says he's gained quite a few levels since the last time, too. Let's see. <laughs> My wife says she just gained 10 pounds eating the cheesecake. <laughs> All right, well, let me go ahead and hail, and let's pick this up. I'm looking at the ratings. It's got some fives and fours. Majority of the ratings are in the threes. So... We're going to run it as a group. It says no combat needed. I mean, this, this is like, and then lots of reading and light puzzle solving. Like, this is everything that we don't do. So, <laughs> so it'll be very interesting for our group to run through it. So let's hail and pick it up, and then I'll share it after I pick it up. It says here, Vice Admiral, you are ordered to drop all present mission priorities and return to Earth Space Dock, where you are to meet with Dr. Wessel, the director of the Gary 7 Project. Starfleet has authorized you to have limited knowledge of Gary 7 technology. Gary 7 technology in this sector is under the jurisdiction of the Vulcan Science Academy under Monk, Monk T. Radon. He will contact you once you arrive at Earth Space Dock and will provide you access to Gary 7 transporter in the hallway directly in front of the Space Dock transporter pads. This technology is highly advanced and highly classified. 
Speak about it to no one. The special transporter will send you to a classified location. You will be filled in on the details when you arrive. Okie dokie. So let me first of all mark this. Let me go find it in my in progress. And make sure I mark that as primary. I like to put those as primary. Oh, wait. And then let me do a share. So the team will have it. Hey, Pat. How you doing? Pat M82 joined. All right, so let me go back to Earth. Earth space dock. And I guess we will all meet up there. Let me have a little bit of cocoa. Brand X Coco, that is. <clears throat> oh, let me see. Oh, I'll just wait till I get on there. And dock. Try again. Dock. I just read in the chat, and all is getting Borg pieces, I believe, for her ship. Which, if she's getting Borg pieces for her carrier, then her carrier is probably going to look pretty wicked. So that will be neat to see. And I have, I have to, I need to finish out the missions. I still have some episodes left to do. Once I hit 50, I just kind of stopped. Like, there was a week, for about a week, I just gamed Star Trek, like, non-stop. And went from, I think, like, level 26 to 50, just boom, 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 back-to-back, -back doing episodes. And got almost one, one to two levels per episode. It was just crazy fast. Then I hit 50 and just kind of felt burnt out. But I still have, mm, like, the whole Borg series... Yeah, I still I still have quite a few of the little missions to do, some episodes left, so I will have to complete those out. And if you do find an episode you like that's dropping equipment you enjoy, you can run that same episode over and over and then try to, you know, get all the all kinds of different equipment. Let's see here. Get the right keys here. All right. So let me just see here. Which space dock is everybody in? I am in Earth Space Dock 8. It said there was a transport out here somewhere. we go. I, wow, I think this is like the first time that we've all ended up, I think, right out the gate. Well, I don't know. Maybe you all had to move it, but all right. Found you all. Oh, my goodness. What are you wearing, Ruthven? Oh, from back there, it almost looked like some weird robes and stuff like that, really adding to your vampire presence. And Nala, Thad, looking sharp in your Fancy-looking body armor stuff there. Nice. And despair. You're still tall and red. All right. I think we're good to go. Find the classified laboratory near the transporter room. And I wonder if they're always talking about this, this door right here. Maybe. I wonder. I could be wrong. Oh, did I get stuck? I think I'm stuck. Hello. I'm stuck in a turbo lift. Nope, this wasn't it. That's okay, because I'm stuck anyway. Ah, you are wrong. That's okay. That's what I get for being wrong. I get stuck. You know, the funny thing is, y'all went in it anyway. Or at least Nala did. That did. That's what you get for following me. 
Ugh. Alright, let me beam up to my ship. That door is like always bugged. Alright, hold on team. Let me see if they can beam me out of a door. Oh, did Oberon get stuck in it? Oh, <laughs> despair stuff. It's like a team thing. Get stuck in the door, going to the wrong area. So, all right, I'll go back in, and this time I know I'll go upstairs. Got it. Got it. And dock. Ah, dock at station. All right. Gonna take a bulk of her time just getting to the right spot. Okay, so that has no bearing on the mission at all. That's just me not knowing how to navigate. And my wife says, "Big surprise." Hey, at least I haven't. As she whispered it, <laughs> she didn't say it. She whispered it. At least my inventory hasn't been so bad lately. So that's a good thing. Okay, so when you say upstairs. I will follow that. Yeah, she asked if my inventory is full yet. Nope, my inventory is still... Still has some room. Oh, this door. It even says interclassified laboratory. Well, here we go. Entering classified laboratory. Now, the only other thing is at some point we start to kind of skip over dialogue if the mission starts to run long so if you're watching this to you know actually watch us progress through the mission um, you know you might miss out on some of the story content because just based on time we might not read every bit of dialogue so that's why I always encourage everybody to come back through and run the mission and experience it for yourself uh, because if you enjoy the the quest um, you know dialogue heavy missions then perfect this might just be right up your alley and there might be things that you miss so please come and run it yourself hello it's wogged welcome to my first effort at creating STO content called Grazarak City oh this is from the creator I really hope that you will enjoy it here are a few tips the mission is designed for solo play don't worry about your away team they have been given their own missions and will separate from you as you go about your duties uh oh well good there's my away team uh, this is not a combat-oriented mission. While there are opportunities for combat as you go, it is possible to complete this mission while avoiding combat. Consider it a good game if you are able to do this. Well, this definitely was not designed with us in mind. We will probably shoot everybody we are allowed to. The goals are as open-ended as possible. It is highly unlikely that this scenario will play the same way twice. Feel free to try it a few different ways. You are encouraged to explore the environment and speak to the inhabitants. Many of them provide subtle clues or even side missions as you go. This scenario is exploration and roleplay based with some light puzzle solving for any level. Above all, enjoy yourself. Be well. Well, that's very cool. Nala says, yep, no space combat. Ah, well, so probably what we will do then is, since this is open, um, I say we just start shooting folks and see how open it is. Nope. Apparently it's not that open. Alright then. Let's go ahead and talk to some folks and see what what mayhem we can start. So it says fine. Well we did that. We got the classified transporter. So enter, enter the Gary 7 transporter. They really took the heart to try and shoot and find everybody. Oh! My wife has moved on to bingo. <laughs> So you got a first place. It's harder than you think. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of reading. So let's just ask, what is Gary 7? Gary 7 technology, which I'm curious. That's an odd name for something. Such as Xceiver circuitry is what makes things like this transporter work. So what is my mission? You may have heard of Grazarak City. It's a resort owned by Duft Grazarak, a Tellarite who once was a captain in Starfleet before he got cozy with the Orions. Yeah, so what's the situation? All transporter technology has been outlawed on Grazarak City. This would probably be done to make sure that Duff Grazarak gets his cut on all smuggled goods. Use this transporter to get our technology back. Okay, so it's a big portal. 
That big portal is Gary 7 Transporter. I rebuilt it. It uses advanced technology which will be able to send you 185 light years to Grazarok City. The equipment at the other end is all set up and ready to receive you. Did you say 185 light years? I really don't know how far that is. The Xavier circuits required that a uh, receiving transporter be at the other end. Yeah, okay, got it. Alright, let's go through the big Stargate. Which I'm assuming is this thing, right? Here. Transport. Oh, an 11.6% chance that you will survive the transport. It has been an honor working with you. Nice. Never tell me the odds, kid. See what I did there? Little Star Wars quote. Never, never tell me the odds. That that's Han Solo, Millennium Falcon, Asteroid Field, C-3PO. Chances of survival. I think he says it maybe more than once in the series, but that's the one that stands out for me. Yeah. Never tell me the odds. I might just roll a twenty. <laughs> that's right. Die twenty, baby. Well, we're here. I used it, so now I gotta find Commander Uta. Now, see, uh, for those who are, you know, wanting to do this on your own, I definitely would say do it because we did find some other folks you could have talked to. Uh, so there will definitely be other opportunities for you to talk to other folks and possibly do other little side quests. There goes Nala. We could just do a whole episode of watching her dance on the table. They just don't have very good music for that. You are pleased to see Commander Uta. He was one of your instructors at Starfleet Academy. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. I'm glad I survived. I have more information for you. Let me know when you are ready. Return to Commander Uta if you desire more information. Okay, uncover leads to the mystery. Well... Let's talk to him and uncover some leads. Commander Uta no nods his head seriously and then waits for you to speak. I don't want to step away. Salute. Uh, I figured I haven't saluted yet. I'm not going to nod my head seriously. Well, look at that. He's got many, many dialogue options. Uh, let's salute the commander and move on. Is there something I can do for you, Vice Admiral? How about where can I find the stolen Gary 7 technology? We'll just move right on. I have absolutely no idea. But it wouldn't surprise me if somebody tried to sell it to Duff Grazerock himself. If he doesn't have it personally, you can bet he knows who does. I appreciate the heads up for all that you know. I have absolutely no idea, but it wouldn't... Sp oh, I think I... There we go. Hit it again. Boom. Okay. Well, that was one person we talked to. Look at that. We're trying to initiate combat. It's not working out so far. Oh, looky! There's some kind of bug thing. Can I use the replicator? I guess you can. I just was not expecting it to have bugs growing in it. Servotron 97 is always pleased to serve its satisfied customers. Oh, no. The food is registered uh, as a licensed product of Quark Enterprises. Yeah, Ruthven says, this replicator seems unclean. Nala says she heard fireworks. I would not be surprised. We already got folks in our area lighting off fireworks for the 4th of July, so probably in-game as well, especially once it hits good old midnight, wherever you're at. We were still about an hour away from midnight, but I would be surprised if we hear more soon, even though there's a ban on it because of the, the weather. Alright, so it says just to find some more clues, uncover leads to the mystery. Always talk to the bartender. Uh, what do you know about Gary 7 technology? Between me and my brother, we know everything. Gary whatever must be something that he knows about. Nice. Uh, tell me about Guft Grazerock. You can meet him in his office. The force, first door on the right as you leave the club. Duft Grazerock is a keen businessman. And he has his, my greatest respect, he certainly has the lobes for wealth. He must be part Ferengi. What's with all these Marla ladies? 
They're clones. Oh. Where is your brother? Grix tends to the other bar in the VIP section on level two. Sounds good. How do I, I guess just press escape. Haha, <laughs> Nala's happy. There's an actual dance floor. Oh, there's Despair and Nala tearing it up. All right. I think we should probably go up to the second floor and see if we can talk to the brother. What is this thing over here to interact with? Oh, access force field controls. Well, I don't need to access force field controls, but I'm going to try to go upstairs and see if we can find the brother. So I can definitely see how this is kind of an open-ended, sandboxy type advent uh, adventure. There's not really... Um, Let's see, this might be second floor. Is there a bar here? Yeah, there is. You know, there's no real clear cut what you have to do. You know, it gives us a clue there, uncover leads to the mystery, but some of the quests that we do, it'll actually have, you know, who to talk to and tell us where to go. Oh, someone is using the replicator. Drinks are never free, he says. All right, so here's Grix. He's the brother. I might have information you need for a price. Talk to me. I'm ready to talk. What can I get for you today, my friend? You can give me some information. Between me and my brother, we know everything. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what do you know about Gary Simon technology? Gary who? This must be one of my brother knows. Never mind. What is this Noskin's problem? He is a drunk, broke Noskin. That's his problem. Okay, I think we're good. How do I access the rest of the station? You will need to obtain a guest pass if you want the doors to open for you. However, I believe your own commander Utah can open the door to the secured cargo areas. My brother is the one who got him his key code so that you guys can scavenge parts for whatever it is that you are building in there. Ask him to open that particular door. Well, there it is. All right, so now we, that was good. Now we just got to come all the way down. Let's see, can I drop airborne? Hey, ladies. You ladies busy later? I got to go back to command Utah. You know, I'm calling him Utah because I'm thinking that should sound futuristic -y, But really, that's like Utah, the state. Hello, Commander Utah. Open the door. But you can find an intercom there on the upper level. So enter the cargo bay one through the door near the makeshift transporter. So we have to use an intercom to let them know when we want out. Alright, so let's go ahead and enter the cargo area. So we are progressing through this little mystery. Is that the cargo area there? You never know. Good luck. Continue the mission. Oh, okay, cool. And away we go. Making good progress. Always takes a minute to load the, the missions when you've you know, not been to an area, so, you know, don't be surprised or shocked if you find yourself patching files. That's quite normal. And there we are. So investigate the cargo areas. Oh, looks like it's gonna have some jumping involved. That's already gonna be a problem for me. I'm not very good at shooting and platformers and whatnot. Oh, that wasn't too bad. I just get nervous when I see that I gotta jump to get somewhere, but looks okay. These must be all the different must be all the different clones. All 
I'm just following the group. Warning. Unauthorized personnel are not permitted in Cargo Bay 2. This is a security violation. Violators are subject to immediate exile from the station via airlock. Thank you. Have a nice day. Well, that sounds like something we need to investigate. Uh, reminds me of Mud's Win. I think that's from the original series, even. I vaguely even remember that. Once you said that, it was like, you know, I think I remember that. You stop and think for a moment and you realize you are in a maze. Commander Utah warned you to find an intercom unit somewhere on the upper floor here, and you remember his words back at Starfleet Academy. Maze-like situations are some of the most dangerous of all. Pick your way through the maze carefully and avoid combat. The close quarters of a maze is no place to be fighting. Keep a cool head. All mazes have a solution. And we get our little warning. Well, we're in it now. Alright, let's see what we can find out. Looks almost like a dead end here. A door that won't open. Just gonna run around until we solve the maze. <sighs> oh, yeah. Keep getting this warning. I ignore the warning. What's with all the bugs and stuff? Oh, hello. Oh, that must be some of the combat that we can choose to ignore. Should we? Should we help? Should we beat up that Nausicaan? All right, we'll we'll negotiate. Yep, negotiations failed. Sorry, Mister, I tried to help you. Cargo nets. So this is up on the second floor. I wonder if that is that the intercom unit they're talking about. I just thought I saw a point. I did. Just can't get to it. Doesn't light up as usable. Mm -mm. Oh well, I can see that this is the. Best area is highlighted, so there it is. Just had to come around to the other side. Okay. It says, "This is Commander Utah. I have alarms going off all across the board. What is your situation? Are you okay? I can send one of the cadets to assist you. Don't send anyone. I am safe for the moment. You have got to get out of there. I am opening the door leading to some of the guest areas. Doors are all over, being locked down by security." I understand that the system is purging the trespassers in Cargo Bay 2. That means beaming them into space. Whoops. You have got to get out of there right now. I cannot help you again until security is bypassed and these secure doors are reopened. Find a passenger named Zylock. Crackle. Did you hear me? Zylock. Now go. Oh, goodness gracious. We're being cleared. We have to go find Zylock. Nala says, I hate invisible walls. I knew. But in this game, you can pretend that they're not invisible walls as much as force fields blocking your way. So they, they can kind of get away with it in Star Trek a little bit. Especially if they're in the middle of beaming people out into outer space. It's terrible. Oh, we're waiting on somebody. There we go. Got everybody. Now, where is it warping us to? Maybe it's warping us into outer space. We didn't get out in time. That would be a very short night. Got seven patches. I'm just looking in my upper upper left-hand corner of my screen. Kind of tells me how much is patching. 
Alright, here we are. Outsiders. This is a place of honorable combat. It was said that Kerr would seek outsider help. I had not thought it possible, but here you are. We seem to have been dropped into the middle of who knows what. Do not insult my honor. I need no help to deal with the thieving Klug. Karaj eyes you with suspicion. If these outsiders approach further, execute the traitor. No further conversation. I will personally cut your tongue out, Yintog. I think those are bad Klingon insults. Die, Ma Tok. The two Klingons are locked in honorable combat. Ooh, do we get to watch? Oh, kind of, sort of. Alright, so we gotta go find Zylock. I hear, like, gunfire? Laser fire? Uh, access box for resorts. Force field system. If this unit is activated, it might be possible to access the station's various force fields from here. However, it's locked down. All right, well, I'm all up for finding... Oh, there they are. Those are the two locked in honorable combat. Hi, don't mind us. We're looking for Zylock. Golly. I don't know what's the matter with, my, with this female. She isn't making any sense. Should I help? This must be like a side quest. Look at that, it does say that there are different things you can do as like a little side quest. That's very cool. If we weren't trying to figure out how to retrieve this stolen equipment, I would say it would be fun. Let's see, there's some more Marlas. Ignore her. Quat. Interesting names. Neep. Ignore him. How about the shipyard. There's lots of people standing around. Universal translator. Hmm. Probably have run past Mr. Zylock, but... Oh, hello. Oh, my goodness. What's wrong with these particular Marlas? What? Are they dying? All gone. I will try to get some help. They're purple... And they look hurt. By three methods, we may learn wisdom. First, by reflection, which is noblest. Second, by imitation, which is easiest. And third, by experience, which is the bitterest. Oh. He dares to be a fool, and that is the first step in the direction of wisdom. The art of being wise. Okay. I think we're good. I think I've left my crew behind. Uh oh. Well, I found a whole bunch of, I don't know what their problem is, melting clones. Let me check my map. Where is this Psylock person? Oh, there is. Yeah, I went way too far, but I found a bunch of these weird clones. Psylocke is in one of these. Hey! We got a party up in here. They got a little bit of everything. Oh, it's that kind of game. She found the party. Let me check my map. So... Not very good at following the map, because the map almost makes it look like, you know, he's just around here somewhere. Maybe go this way. No. Well, that's not him. And the Zylock is around here somewhere. Oh. Wait a minute. I thought I just saw something with, uh, Interact. Oh, that. Let me. Hmm. 
Alright, let me check my map. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how to get it Zylock. Hmm. Maybe it's past the party goers. Oh, okay. Someone found Zylock. Yay! Now we gotta find. Haha. <laughs> oh, I said she found the dancing Borg. Oh, here we go. Totally a different place than I went. Oh my gosh. Even the Borg like to get down, but that's like the creepiest looking Borg I have ever seen. Wow. But even the Borg like to kick it. Oh, there's Dave. So use the panel in Medusin suite to override doors. This is really, really creepy seeing the Borg party in. Wow. We will be assimilated, I suppose. In a fun way, though. Alright, let's go find the Medusin suite. There's some replicators there. Wow, the Borg really know how to live it up, huh? So where's this Medusin suite? Okay, it's back here somewhere. This is very creepy mission. Alright, so I think we gotta come back here a little bit. Oh, well, it's the greatest pleasure planet of them all, so I guess it kinda makes sense. Oh, uh, and there it is, override security doors. Consider them overridden. You did it! Yay! The doors are all overridden. You should now have free access throughout the resort. Duft Grazrock is bound to know what has happened. He needs to be confronted, but first you need to find a way to drop his force field. I have an idea about that. If you can make your way back here, and assuming you do not already have a plan of your own, well, I will be there in a few moments. Because no, I do not have a plan. And, luckily, they're going to warp us back to him. Oh, I missed Nala doing the robot. Oh, wait, there it is. Oh, she's on top of the engine. Careful, you don't want to get some kind of radiation poisoning off that thing. You don't know where it's been. Okay, just... Waiting to watch the patching go by. There it is. Quick. Oh, look at there. Now I got to arrest Duft Grazrock. Several explosions can be heard nearby within Grazrock City. Must be the fourth. This is a message to all guests. Greeting. My name is Gruff Duft Grazrock, owner and administrator of this resort. There are a number of unprecedented and unexpected events taking place at this moment as I am speaking to you. Please do not be alarmed. There is no need to be concerned in any way. For the next few moments, I am requesting all guests to return to their quarters and use manual locks on their doors. It appears that a small breach of security has resulted in doors being unlocked across the resort. So please, for your safety, return to your quarters and use the manual locking devices provided. Can't breathe. Let's see if my map shows where we gotta go. Uh, it's a big place. I guess we just run. How horrible. Well, we saw what he looks like. However, that doesn't really tell me where he's at. Alright. Let's just go running. Maybe we'll... Maybe we'll figure something out accidentally. We're good at that. Looks like we gotta take the maze back through. I wonder if I can just run through here. Ooh. Open emergency bulkhead. Oh, should I? I found an emergency bulkhead. I'm curious. I'm thinking, yeah. Let's see if it sucks us out to outer space. This emergency bulkhead deployed when the inner chamber decompressed. The chamber beyond is now open to space. Oh. 
Leave it alone. Well, I was partially right. Okay, let's see. There's one over here if I can jump. Let's open this one. Same thing. It opens right to outer space. So, all right, here's a door. Here we go. Found it. Thank you, Despair. You found it. I think we've lost Nala and Thad. We're here at just past the maze. I think you I think you can find your way through. Oh, she's stuck in a wall. Oh no, we're stuck in a wall. Oh, that's terrible. All right, so what we're gonna do? Because I, I don't think you can warp and then just come right back. I think we might be able to, if we can warp to the next progressive area, we might be able to bring you with us. So let's see here. That's the Marla Seven. Ha 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 ha! She's laughing. Something blew up. She's crazy. All right, I don't think anything here. Let's see if we can find a way to advance our mission. Maybe we can pull Nala safely out of a wall. All right, well, it looks like I have a quest person to talk to icon this way. So, and I don't get all these, they're like puddles or pools of goo or something. All right, so let's see if I can navigate this maze. Not doing very good with the run or the jump in here. Probably opens the outer space. Yep. Yeah, that's why I thought those puddles are Marla goo, and it's kind of, kind of yucky. Oh, we're back to uh, Mr. Uh -huh. Let's see what he's got to say now. Oh, what is the situation? You managed to override all the station's doors, but Duft Gazrak is still protected by his force field. This station has four bypass conduits. You may have seen them. They are set into the floor near some of the main doorways. They need to be activated. Once they are activated, the force field power can be redirected back into the resort's main power generator located at the center of the complex. It's normally guarded, but I understand that you somehow took care of the clones. I'm not sure. Oh, let's see here. Nala says, I got stuck when everyone beamed into the area. And Ruthven says, um, a note to all level designers, leave enough space at beam-in points. And for some reason, for her, the stuck command isn't working. Uh, yeah, so I'm hoping if we find a spot that will let us warp to a next scene, it'll let you go with us and then unstuck you. I hope. I did nothing to the clones. Well, somebody did. In that case, you should take advantage of the situation. There are problems all over this resort, and I suspect that Grazrak is blaming you for each case, so be careful. All right. So we have to... Ooh. Markings. Now, this I don't remember seeing anything for. Found contains three identical sets of switches marked white, bypass, and orange. Have we have we seen anything, or did anybody happen to notice a pattern that we needed to be aware of? You know, sitting despair, you're still taller than everybody here. That's awesome. Or did somebody just pull up the door as we were running through this bypassing? Because we can skip it if need be. All right. Well, I have not personally tried to activate any of those force field things that were on the floor. So I guess we gotta run and find all of those. But I'll leave the panel alone. I thought there was at least one force field activator around here somewhere. There's one. Yeah, someone is melting all the Marl clones. Slowly but surely. Activate force field controls. 
Ah, here it is. Uh, I believe... Uh, okay, that's it. Just activate one of the floors, which is... So I'm activating one here. Uh, what did they say we gotta do? Something about bypassing them so that they go... Go to a center room. I'll put... Oh, I need to get to your second setting? I really don't know what I'm supposed to do with the panel. This one's the light puzzle solving. He obviously did not write this mission for us because I have zero idea what I should put these at. Oh, and I can't reactivate it either. Right, well, that's one. <laughs> that activated one. I tried to activate one. Let's see if I've got another floor panel back here somewhere. Look out, 80s. Oh, it says I should have solved a couple. I, I didn't even know. They, I didn't know they were going to be that, like, with the colors and stuff. Yeah, well, if we find more, I'll, I'll stop and let you check out the pop-up. I don't want to see. Ooh, that's the replicator. There's another one on the floor, way back here. Hopefully we get all four. Access force field controls. So there's a white, green, and orange. White no marking, green bypass, orange receive. I honestly don't know which what we should put them at. having some cocoa while I think about it. I, I really don't know. Uh, let's see, Thad says I did orange, green, white, and got a partial bypass message. And Gridster's on. Hey, Gridster. All right, well, if you did... A, if you did Orange, green, white, and got a partial bypass. Orange, green. I wonder what would happen if we try a different combo. Maybe we can get like a, a full bypass. Gridster says he was playing some ROM, so he was a little late. Well, better late than never. All right, well, I'm going to try... I'm going to try green first, and then orange, and then white. Oh, I got partial bypass as well. Let's start over. You did orange. How about orange, white, green? <laughs> Let's just take some variations of ones we've done. Panel partially bypassed. Okay, that's probably not it. How about orange, white, green. No, partially. White, green, orange. Nope. Oh, shoot. Oh, snap. I accidentally hit loop below and I wanted to do, uh, try again. Crap. Maybe we were thinking too hard to try green three times. Oh, you know what? That is probably brilliant. Ruth Vincent says try green three times. Yeah, there's nothing that says you have to use all three colors, so... Alright, let me see if I can find another one. Oh, and all it says is what she did to solve the one she did. And I'm... I don't, how did that turn out? See, I can't access that one anymore. I think I broke it. Sprint. Yeah, even Grister said I green, green, green. Well, alright, we will try. I just gotta find another one. Oh, no, I just ran past. 
Sorry, Nala, you're so short. You're very easy to overlook sometimes. Okay, someone found one. They got the colors up. Where are you? She says, I just ran past her, but I totally overlooked her. Probably going away from her now. Ooh, big lizard man. Okay, now I'll bypass one. Let's try green. 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 Yay, I bypassed one. Oh, she's in the wall. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, okay, hold on. Let's see if I can find her in the wall. Just for curiosity's sake. <laughs> Just so I can say I found a Nala in the wall. Oh, man, I missed her again. Where is she? I keep just running past her. I'm looking in the walls. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, wait. Yeah. Just outside that room. Yeah, you are in a wall, that's for sure. I can't even see you. At least if I come in here, it gives me a clue that there's somebody in a wall. Oh, and I can't zoom in anymore. Yeah, you are stuck. Crazy. So on my machine, there you are. Hey. Crazy. Yep, I can't see you at all from out here. That's why I ran past you each time. Oh, wait, there you are, kind of. You're like a ghost. All right, team. Well, we need... We need to we need to arrest this guy and get her out of here. Well, it looks like green, green, green is the correct whatever. I just don't know if we have found all of the appropriate conduits, if you will. Let's see. I got a bunch of ops messages. Let's see here. Oh, green, green, green. We're just gonna hit all. I'm just going to turn in all of these ops messages here. Green. Done. Green. 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 Alright, I don't know if we have bypassed everything yet. Any ideas if we've bypassed all of them yet? Oh, I thought I heard somebody trying to speak. Let me plug in my headset. I might be able to hear you better. I was like, why am I steering all weird? Okay, well, there's that. Ruth Vin's back there. All right, well, let's follow. Let's just follow Ruth Vin. Oh, Raz just stepped away. I think she's getting ready for bed. So we'll see if we can beam you over some cheesecake while you're stuck in the wall. We'll see what we can do about that. Yeah, I think we're missing one too. I'm just not quite sure where it's at. So I, I don't know if this will make a complete circuit. And we might be able to find... Oh, there's a wall. Glass wall. So we might be able to find one more we make a complete circuit through here. And I've got one, I just don't know if I can interact with it. <laughs> Ruthven says, I don't know where I'm going, I'm just using the run around until I see something method. Yes, that's that's worked for us in the past. Or we'll ram it with our ship. That seems to work too. Alright, so we're running too. So 
Yeah, I, I can see how this would be like kind of a fun little the sandboxy like they were describing because there's really been no no strong clue indicators as to what we're doing. Oh, not said there was a clicky somewhere behind us. Well, I totally missed out on where that was with the delay that we have in chat. I totally ran past everything by the time I got that. See, and I can't interact with that one. So we will find something, I'm sure. But it would be nice for something like this if we had uh, a little bit better idea of where we could find some of these things we have to interact with. Okay, we're, we're about to make our circle through again. Okay, so press V and see if our tricorder will find any clickies for us. Well, it said there was a clicky over here somewhere. It's obviously not there. Don't freak out, ladies. We will save you. It says zero anomalies. I wonder if they would consider Nala in a wall to be an anomaly. What is it? Talking about the replicator? I'm not hungry right now. Okay. Well, that was not it. Ha! Ah, someone found it. How ironic, Admiral. I'm trying to rid the galaxy of weapons, and you gave me the best one ever. And now, as a favor to you, I'm going to send you back to the beginning with it. How many times have we done this? We are really beginning to become quite a nuisance. I rub shoulders with some of the most vile, sadistic men alive today. Some of these men are the enemies of your enemy. Starfleet's enemies. Even if you managed to arrest me, I would not be held. I would not even be charged with anything. In fact, it is you that would likely be charged with something unfair and terrible. So I'll do you a favor and spare you of all that. Well, I suppose that practice makes perfect. I think five days this time should do the trick. Now you and I can pretend this never happened. Again. Well, Ruthven found him, and that's triggered this. Somehow, hopefully this will get Nala back to us since we're going to go back. Oh, Gritster's got to go. Dang it. All right, Gritster. Oh, I missed when he left. So let's see if this pulls Nala out of our wall. Traveling through time is like traveling down a long, dark tunnel. The further you travel, the more you... The voice fades. Alright, who got stuck? Did Ruthven get stuck? Okay, so Nala's out. Are we separated? Let me swing around here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Despair is stuck. Alright, yeah, there's Nala. I don't see... Uh, I think we're missing someone else, too. I think Ruthven is stuck. Uh, well, at least he can dance. Yeah. That was it. It is done. That, as they say, is all she wrote. Alright, so let's let's talk about it. If you're going to run a mission and be rated number one, let's criticize and pick it apart. So let's start off with a, let's start off with the sandwich method of critiquing. This is one of the coaching techniques I learned at work. We're going to treat it like a sandwich. We're going to start with something good, then maybe hit a couple even better ifs, and then wrap it up with some positive reinforcement. So first, Nala says they have nice walls. 
Okay, that's a good way to start us off on the uh, sandwich method there. So they have good walls. I'm also going to say that uh, for being dialogue heavy, it wasn't as long as I thought it would be. We've actually, as a group, have done some missions that were super long with lots of dialogue. And this one, even though he said it was dialogue heavy, really isn't that bad. I suppose if you took the time to talk to every single inhabitant on the station, then it could be considered very dialogue heavy. Uh, but time-wise, we're clocking in. You figure it takes us time to get together. I like to chat a little bit at the start. We're clocking in at about an hour to under under an hour, all inclusive. So not too bad. Um, Ruthven says I dislike the lack of coherent direction at times. Yeah, I did feel rather kind of haphazard, you know. But to, but to be fair, like I'll have to say, to be fair, at the beginning he does say it's kind of sandboxish, where you're just there left to explore. For us. Um, we do prefer a little more goal oriented that sometimes has a little clear instruction on what to do I think we're more more traditional in the sense of our exploration and stuff we like to have a nice long quest but a quest that at least guides you a little bit better of where you're supposed to go so this this one was not exactly right up our alley as t in terms of what we would normally select to do so I, I will say though that um, for folks who do like kind of an open sandbox exploration then this one's perfect because there really was little to no direction we just kind of ran around until we found everything oh Pat M82 says uh, she wants to see Nala dance so here let me just turn the camera so while we criticize Nala if you wouldn't mind I know <laughs> that's that's the thing <laughs> we're using Nala for our entertainment purposes. Uh, and all it says, to be fair, it did say solo play, so I can see where teams trying to beam in could cause problems. I was thinking that myself. Ooh, she changed her outfit while we were watching. Naughty. Um, I would say that that's a fair assessment, too. Because we did come in as a team, it has to put us in different spots. So we probably caused some of our own wall stickage. So that's, that's a, a fair criticism. Would it not be something to take into consideration, though, for future creations and for editors as well? Uh, I would think that it would still be something to consider just anyway. Because you never know. You might have people that want to run it as a group like we do. We're, we're a group type of thing. So either, either just in general, be aware of the stickage. Because I really don't know how hard it is to edit beaming points like that. Uh, then, to be fair, the other criticism is just don't take missions that specifically say solo play. Um, but I would say, harsh criticism here, if you're going to be picked as the Foundry Spotlight mission and be rated number one, then you should be able to accommodate all play styles, regardless of how you have your mission rated. That's, that's probably very harsh, but, um, you know, when you're at the top, that just means you are the best. So take your take your punches. Uh, let's see here. So Ruthven says also no space combat makes me sad personally, but it wasn't promised by the mission, which is true. Again, that's that's us and our group. We really love the space combat, and when we can, we even like to do some ground shooting. We try to enact some combat, probably not at the appropriate times, but. Um, you know, maybe it's possible we could have fought Borg or all kinds of stuff. It's just the mission really didn't seem to, to support it, and it would not have made sense to have had ground combat. So a little bit disappointing for us. We are, we are combat folks. And let's see here. And then to kind of put the bottom layer on the sandwich, though. Uh, but, yeah, not all is lost. It, it did have some interactive spots. That says had some interesting interactive objects. I like the replicators. I did enjoy the fact that uh, you got to, um, you know, find those different shield points and then put in the proper code. I just somehow I missed, and this is for me, I missed where the code was green, green, green. I don't even know where we got that. Ruthven figured it out. Gridster put it in chat. So something tipped them off to that. 
I just totally missed it, but that's me because I usually just race through the dialogue. Um, but those were those were unique points. I feel like this could be part of something bigger because we've now been introduced to this guy. We've been introduced to time traveling. We've gone back five days. It really seems like I'm just watching her do the robot now. That's awesome. It just really feels like we could, you know, there's more to it. Uh, Ruthven says it wasn't tipped off so much as used Occam's razor. Oh. That's more sciency than I know. Ruthven says the simplest solution green equals bypass, so spam green. Well, there you go then. Nice, I'm digging the robot. And does the snake dance? Oh, almost had a sneeze. Oh, and just as soon as it came, it left. So I'm gonna give it. I, I think I think I'm gonna give it the three that I see. Um, I'm gonna give it a four. I'll tell you why I'm gonna give it a four. First, I said a three. I'm gonna go back and give it a four. I'll tell you why I'm giving it a four. It's quick. For one, I like that. We have done some missions in the past that were unnecessarily long. This one, to some degree, may be unnecessarily short, but that's because we bypassed a lot of the side missions. The only problem that, that we have as a group playing at night like this is we do take into consideration the time that it takes to run. So if a mission is overly long, like we really don't know how long a mission is going to take. So sometimes we end up skipping a lot of potential story and dialogue for sake of time. Because we have run into some missions that were super, super long because we were reading the dialogue. So we probably hamstring this one ourselves and cut it shorter than, uh, say, somebody who went through and tried to talk to all the people. Because there was a section there where, you know, talking to certain people it actually gave it looked like it had some some options there where I could interact and solve problems for some folks like you know why isn't this lady helping me so it sounds like um, you know we probably could have had spent more time in the game and lengthened it and Ruthven says and others time suggestions are way off and I think that's I think there's probably no real easy way to tell people how long your mission is going to be because everybody's going to play it differently. What I would suggest, and I know that this doesn't fit every author's style, so this is not a criticism to this particular mission, but just kind of a thought out loud, is, yeah, Nala says, yeah, I still remember the two-hour, like two-hour, 45-minute quest, like a super, super long one, yeah. Um, but I'm just trying to think, if a person could have their quest and their dialogue, you know, mapped out like they do, but then in there put the options that further the story like just the story like to an orange color or a different color because I've seen people do that they can alternate the the text color so if you make the options that are just for the story and color code those and then you could say you know by doing just the story arc X mission will take approximately X amount of minutes then a person could make that decision. Okay, hey, if I do just the dialogue options pertaining to the story, this will fit the time that I have for this particular evening. Then, if you want to branch out and look at the other dialogue options as you go along, then that's purely within your realm of decision as well. So, just something that I had in mind. Yeah, Ruthven says that yes, those have helped us move quicker in the past. So that that's just a a thought. Again, you know, not within the scope of this mission, but um, you know, something I would like to see more of. That way, people can get maybe more accurate times, and then let the the player decide what's important for them and what's not. And maybe some more quest indicators on where to go so that we don't feel like we're running in circles. You don't want to artificially inflate your mission 
by having people get lost, but if I'm actually on a mission path, the little markers wouldn't hurt. But anyway, that's just me. So overall, interesting story. It is kind of short if you just cut to the chase. Um, I think it's short because it feels like it's leading into something. I really thought when I went back to five days, it was going to have me do something else. Like, let's do some more. So, uh, Truxton2x is in. says, what's up? Truxton, you are at the end of our night. We're just recapping and debriefing the, the mission we just ran. So, that's it. Uh, so, let me go ahead and give that four, four stars. I know sometimes I'm overly critical on the missions, and I do apologize because I don't make any of these at all, and I've never even attempted it. So I can't begin to imagine the amount of work and effort that goes into making these. Um, but, you know, when you get picked for, like, number one, for example, and a, and a spotlight, that just means you're on your way to making some really good missions for the future. And so I want to make sure that your next ones get picked as well and are that much more successful for other people to come and play. So I can't wait to see some more from you. Ah, uh, well, Truxton, I've got I got bad news for you. Truxton says, you know, well, maybe catch you tomorrow. Unfortunately, because you know we've got the Fourth of July here, um, I won't be broadcasting tomorrow because I'll be trying to catch some fireworks, and then Thursday probably won't be here as well because I'm just continuing on the holiday weekend. So. Wednesday, Thursday, I won't be here. Friday, though, I don't have any plans. So uh, there's no no birthdays or anything like that interfering. Uh, so last Friday was totally a, a mess up on my part because we ended up having some friends come in and we had a big old surprise party for my wife. So Friday was a no-go. I, I wasn't even here at the house so I could hop on and tell people we weren't here. Um, but this Friday, I have no such plans. But if something comes up, I'll try to at least maybe change the little pug message that we aren't here. But so far, that's what it's looking like. Wednesday, Thursday, we won't be here. But we should be back Friday night to do our Friday fellowship. Uh, Trixon says, yeah, yeah. Have fun with the fam. and I'll see you on Friday then. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you should be here Friday. Yeah, I'm missing some Friday fellowship. I gotta, I gotta log back into that early enough to see if if my new person's even been hacked. So hopefully I'll be able to, to be caught up with everybody. Oh, don't forget to exit the mission after raiding. Oh, what do I do? Beam up. Yeah. All right. Well, let me beam up. Thank you for dancing, Nala. Uh, Truxton says, by the way, you say my name twice. That's why I put it the 2X. Just saying. So it's Truxton Truxton. I thought the 2X was some kind of... Well, now I know. So Truxton Truxton. That's like a tongue twister. Obram says, check your mail in Loacher. I sent you a weapon. Ah, then I will check my mail and see what I've got in Lord of the Rings. I'm actually pretty excited about that. Um... I don't plan on buying it anytime soon. However, if I ever get to a high enough level, if our group gets gets high enough and we all decide on it, some of that Riders of Rohan stuff looks pretty interesting. Um, mounted combat, I saw a little bit of. Looks pretty interesting. So I don't know. I might have to invest a little more time in Lord of the Rings. Just saying, something to keep an eye out for. Oh, Truxton, Truxton says it's a Sega game. We'll see you Friday. Yeah, well, I think that'll be be good good enough time here for me to go ahead and stop out. So uh, thank you again, everybody, for joining us. Despair, thanks for running. Nala, Ruthven, Thad, and for everybody out there in the Pugland watching. Uh, really appreciate it. Next week, we'll be back to run another Foundry Spotlight. We'll just keep running those until they run out of them. Always a pleasure. Or... If uh, in the Star Trek forums you have a mission that you would like us to run, something that you think is worthy, uh, that maybe has been overlooked by the, the Foundry Spotlight, let us know because we can run that just as easily as anything else. So 
Other than that, everybody, uh, for those who are celebrating the 4th of July, have a good, happy, safe 4th. Don't blow off any fingers. You know, don't come back missing a couple fingers or anything. Uh, for everybody else, just be safe, and we'll see you Friday. All right, good night, everybody.